guys, this thing totally exceeded my expectations. And now I realize why these things sold for so much money on Meekum and a couple other auctions. I just did the comparables check. One sold for 14, one sold for 17,800. One, it's a factory race bike, a genuine actual factory race bike with only 70 of these being produced. This is number 63, as you can see on the plaque here. It's ultra rare. This one was in the James Hollerick Trail Bike Museum. I remember seeing it the first time I went up there and I was like, wow, what a piece of, t this is total moto unobtainium right here. Made right here in New Hampshire. Is that correct, yeah. Billy? Right, yeah. Keene, New Hampshire. Yep. yep, they've been in business for over 50 years producing bikes. They started with the two wheel drive ones, kind of like a utility agricultural slash military machine. And they progressed. We have another one of these. We had number 60, 62. 62 in the museum here for a number of years. The guy picked it up, who owned it. We actually have it placed fifth in the AMA Nationals overall throughout the season. The flat track version of this, if you go online, Google Brocon 3, 3, RT340, this is the Cobra model, you'll see that one comes up, the flat tracker, it's in the museum on display, it's not for sale. This one sadly is for sale, sadly for us, luckily for you. If you're looking for a world-class piece of unobtainium factory motocross racing history, buy this bike. You're not going to find another one like it. Billy, uh, I know you're a big fan of, of, of James Hollerick. You went up to the auction. Billy, is our he's a procurement agent for the New England Motorcycle Museum at Kaplan Cycles. He's bought hundreds, if not thousands, of motorcycles. This one caught your eye out of uh, 300 bikes that were there, and you bought it home. Tell us a little bit about the bike, what, what you know about it. When I recognize that it was a Cobra by this plaque on the frame, I went, wow, this is awesome. I, I never thought we'd have an opportunity to buy one for our own cause. This bike is, is second to none. I've talked to the guy that worked in the factory race team and he told me this is a special cylinder with special racing porting. Uh, it's a 340cc, but it makes about 10 or 15% more horsepower than so a stock one. My seat of the dyno says 45 horse. That's what, what, I, that's what I'm saying. Yes, uh, I no doubt about it. The, what, is that from the seat of the pants dyno? Yeah, they, okay, they, yeah. They, they were rated for 40, the yeah. stock one. Right. And, and I'm saying I'm saying 45 on, on this one. Yeah, that, that right line with what you said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, but this bike, they, they started with a bike that has basically no engine braking. So they had to come up with some solution for that, and their solution was mag wheels and disc brakes. I mean, how cool is that? These are real magnesium wheels, I am told, and so they're they, the ultra lightweight. The disc brakes this is the first dirt bike ever with two wheel disc brakes. They work great and too. They work good. I was they're... hauling down the hill, and then the first time I went slow, and then by the fourth time I was riding down the hill like I was on a modern race bike. Right, they're starting to bite. Yep, they got they got the glaze off. These this bike has been sitting. It, for a long time just being looked at. The brakes and suspension are 10 on this bike it, for, the, for awesome. the period. Yeah, and the, the Bader forks and the Coney rear shocks. The bike, I don't believe, came stock with Coney's, but it had Bader forks on it, and those forks probably came from the factory for this bike. Bader custom made the forks to accommodate um, their disc brake setup here, so it's got bosses on the fork for that. You can have the brake on either side. So it's just this motorcycle, it's the Cobra. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the graphics on the tank. The raised uh, graphics uh, would have been here saying that it was a Cobra, but it is most definitely a Cobra. We could reproduce those if you really needed them. Uh, I could get those done. Yes, right. It's a dome graphic. Just, but this, Ken, you, you had that look like you were having a good time. I didn't want to stop, <laughs> man. I, I don't know if the camera picked up how fast this thing really accelerates. And when you're on a vintage bike, probably not, I always say 10 hours before you go race speed, but I just I just got excited, man. I was like, I, yeah. and, uh, the, the more you turn the throttle, the faster it goes. It was like you're hooked to a big rubber band and it was just pulling you. Right, and as much as you try to do a wheelie with this, it puts the power to the ground, it stays on the ground. Oh, it just hooks up and goes. It hooks up and goes. It doesn't spin the tire. I mean, you've got it to spin up a little bit, but you had to try. This bike is just made to go fast. I, I have two friends that actually race these in Arma Nationals, an off-road series, and uh, the, the Drain Brothers, and uh, they go fast and they win on the Rokon RT340. And theirs aren't the Cobra, I don't believe. I believe they have the standard RT340, which is no no slouch in its own right. It definitely has uh, a great pedigree in racing. Uh, international six-day trial enduro. Uh, these bikes finished with gold medals uh, with local riders from New England. Uh, but that that's the enduro version of this. But it's still, Rokon is, is a no fooling motorcycle, real the real deal. So the dirt bike, with an automatic transmission. In fact, the first motorcycle ever made that was 
uh, by a production manufacturer with an automatic transmission is this bike. First bike with disc brakes, first automatic, first bike with cast snowflake magnesium gray wheels. That Those are the factory wheels. Those are true unobtainium. And uh, it's a factory race bike, and it's one of 70 produced. And it has the factory porting. Just to summarize what Billy said, just remarkable. And it's been completely gone through by our techs here. The, the fuel tank was flushed out, had a full carb service, new fuel lines, new inline fuel pet, new new inline Pecock assembly. Uh, it's running BP 110 fuel mixed 32 to 1 racing fuel, brand new air filter. Uh, the transfer gearbox oil was, was replaced, a new Ori grips on it, uh, a new kill switch assembly on it. Uh, and it, we also put a new drive belt on it also because when James restored it, the belt was a little dry check, so we put a brand new one on there. Uh, new secondary clutch hold down bolt and flat washers, new new lock and flat washers for the engine mount bolts. Loctited all the engine and transfer box mount bolts. They service both the front and rear brake master cylinders. So this was a museum piece on display for many years in James Museum. You know, right through it, bled both the front and rear brakes and then test rode it. And the thing's an absolute effing rocket ship. It's got the original Keen New Hampshire. Give them a call. You don't believe me? Call them up. They're still in business. They'll answer the phone. Tell them what you're looking at. Ask them what it's worth. And they'll tell you. 14, 18,000 is what the last two sold four years ago before the COVID pricing. So who knows what this thing's really worth? We're going to put it up for auction. We'll let, we'll let the, the market determine what the value is. Um, I'm reading the work order so you know the thing's been completely gone through and it needs nothing. It was previously restored by James, but uh, we had it in the service farm for 12 hours. Jimmy worked on it, get it detailed, uh, um, completely tuned. The jetting and everything perfect, all new fuel lines, fuel drain lines, everything's dialed in and ready to go. Then it went to the detail shop, it was steam clean, uh, cleaned, cleaned everything, the tires, seats, grips. The frame paint is beautiful on this bike, exactly like we got it from James. Just freaking beautiful. Polished all the chrome, polished all the aluminum. Look at how nice, nicely polished, professionally polished uh, fork lowers that was done uh, originally by James and then by us. It was in the detail. Matter of fact, Ronnie, you did the detail on it. Yes, sir. With the guy behind the camera, Ronnie, uh, five hours in the detail shop, 12 hours in the service department, plus parts. The work order came to $2,313. That's what it cost to, to resurrect a museum display piece that was previously restored and get it dialed in beautifully. This one's ready to go to the line, line at Mid-Ohio. Take it to Southwick, take it to Unadilla, or roll it into a museum. It don't get no better than this. It is missing a couple things, I know it's one, it's missing a clutch lever, and two, it's missing a shift lever. <laughs> Honestly, these things, you don't have to think about shifting. You don't have to worry about it. Once you get in the groove riding one of these things, you can go faster with it because you don't have to mess with shifting. And it's got that variable rate belt drive. Uh, Ronnie asked me, how fast do I think the bike is while you're out riding, Ken? I'll bet you go over 100. It just kept on pulling just and pulling. Going, it seemed like going, the faster going, you went, going. the more it was taking off. Right on. Like lower yeah. in the like when you're going 25, 35, 45, right. it was not in in the power band. I don't think I fully hit the power band once in the video. I came close. I felt it coming on the pipe, but it was time to hit the brake because I was at the end of the street, you know. <laughs> so uh, you, you'd almost need to bring it down a drag strip to really open it up safely, you know. Right on, right on. But I don't think it was meant to do that, uh, but it certainly could. And, uh, so many cool features, high quality components. The top, top of the line. And again, that cylinder, it's got some serious porting done to it. It was done at the factory. Factory not, race I, bike, not, not aftermarket, factory. I, I was told by that gentleman that we spoke to about the last one, who said that uh, you know these had the uh, factory racing cylinders on them, the 70s. Look at the condition of the master cylinder. It looks like brand new, and it's been completely gone through by Jim. It braided stainless lines. Look at the rear master cylinder. Look at the componentry and the quality of the engine cases and the counter shaft sprocket. This is like an absolute time capsule. Huge Makuni carb. Uh, but even the rubber boot looks brand new and it's nice and pliable. I mean, it's it's a time capsule. It's like going back to the 70s and having the Rokon factory team build you a weapon. 54 tooth rear sprocket, chrome sprocket, big oversized chain, just a kick-ass piece. Seat's nice and comfy. You got six inches of suspension travel in the seat. Can't say the same for the new Hondas or, or, or uh, any of the new, the new bikes, that's for sure. And, and you've got nice shocks on it. Uh, pull start, started first first pull for me. I'd say first kick, but first pull. Let's see if she does it again. Wanna give a little gap, gas for me, buddy? Yeah. 